Uh, as an artist, I'm interested in traveling to unknown worlds and the means by which we perceive our surroundings. This brought me to outer space and to the question, how do we experience emptiness and how does outer space feel like? I asked this question to some astronauts during my residency. I was an artist in residence at ESA in the main research center of the European Space Agency in 2006. And I had the um, opportunity to ask some astronauts how they deal with outer space. And um, it was a bit of surprise for me that on some level they didn't understand what I'm asking for. And um, it took some time until I realized getting in touch with outer space in a direct way means that people die. It takes only uh, 60 sec uh, seconds and people are gone. So the direct contact to the outer world is something uh, which, they, which they don't want to perceive or which they don't want to arrange. So whatever people um, experience um, from the outside environments is a mediated one. So people are living in a space capsule or they have a space suit. So the focus is on the seeing. Seeing is what happens through the helmet. But also hearing happens from the inside. People are listening to their own heart um, beat. And uh, feeling, tasting, smelling, and actually uh, touching surfaces is not possible. The space capsule is the system that keeps people alive. And in the same way, the space suit is a life-sustaining system. Uh, at the same time, and for uh, safety reasons, it keeps uh, the human being away from the surrounding. Against this background, the functionality of the space capsule cannot be rated high enough. The capsule, and as well the space suit, they are the third skin of the astronaut. Uh, they protect him from the deadly solar radiation as well as from the vacuum. The vehicle, and here you see a transfer vehicle, it is from the Orion concept. This vehicle uh, carries the human being to his or her destination and the, uh, back safely. It is the temporary home and working space of the astronauts. It is a storage room and it contains everything the space traveler will need. Anything that is not on board at takeoff is missing until the end of the journey, and it cannot be sent after. So this is a very dramatic situation because everything what happens and what you need, everything is located on this little engine. And if someone wants to speak about uh, order of uh, machine cult, and this is something which I was asked to talk about, uh, then it is the firm belief that the space capsule and the people living in it will not be damaged during the journey from a psychologically and also from a physiological part, and that uh, the capsule will return to Earth sound and safe. Within my artistic research and against this background, I began to deal with the life world of uh, future space travelers. And I wondered what contribution I as an artist can make here. And this scenario here, the 1,000 day scenario, is the most feasible scenario they are talking and researching about today can change. So this implies that they are flying to Mars for 250 days. They stay on Mars surface doing research, living there for 500 days, and then they go back for another 250 days. Together, 1,000 days, these are three years. Three years, they are living together in a crew size of four to six, more four people, 
mostly male people are researched, and the distance between the two planets, depending on the location of the two planets, is at a minimum 56 million kilometers. So this is very, a very long uh, distance. Uh, while the physiological impairments as, uh, of long-term astronauts are largely known and researched today, the, uh, psych uh, the psychological and psychosocial consequences of such an extended expedition to Mars can only be observed on the journey itself. So here I mention some of the things which happens to the body, and there's disorientation due to weightlessness, there is uh, the shift of bodily fluids, they go all up also in the weightless space, but there's also uh, the bone demineralization, the muscle diminishing. These are things which also happen in the near Earth orbit on the International Space Station, so people are familiarized with these questions already. On the other side, the psychological uh, impacts, uh, they can only be um, tested on the journey. And um, here I have a list of some of them, uh, which, um, and some of them are really new, which is the extreme distance I have mentioned, but it's also uh, connected to the Earth out of view phenomenon. There is a lack of privacy due to the small environment and all the other uh, things that uh, are influencing uh, the people living in this small capsule habitat. Um, in order uh, to, uh, to approach my question whether artistic works uh, will help here, I have started with a very uh, intensive literature reviews. I did interviews, I visited a space company, etc. So I uh, accumulated a lot of information. And uh, the outcome of all this information were uh, five artistic prototypes and five categories. This was really a big job I have done here because I was overwhelmed by all the technological and all the medical information I had. And uh, I came down one day and um, I asked myself, myself, how can I deal with this uh, question and these demands? And, then I turned back to my artistic perspective and um, I invented these names. And with these names, these titles, I was from one moment free with all what I can do in the way that uh, when I invented the artwork uh, of limitlessness, I could deal with the disorientation. When I invented the artwork of placelessness, with uh, the meaninglessness of the, our neighbor planet, I can deal all, um, out of the blue with the Earth all, out of view phenomenon. With the artwork of sensorialness, sensorial understimulation, home likeliness is the social environment, and uh, closeness is the limited uh, privacy. So all these um, topics, um, could be addressed by artistic works and could support the living environment uh, the astronauts are living in, also inside uh, the space capsule. This was also important by, because everything which goes on a space flight has to be an experiment and everything has to be connected with a hypothesis. So you can't send something in a space capsule up to Mars or up to the ISS, which is not an experiment. And in the moment I have these invented these categories, I can say, good, the artwork of limitlessness can deal with the subject body positioning in a way that you have an object which uh, could be used in a floating situation. So floating as the observer, the astronaut, and I have a floating object. This object uh, has to deal with the multi-perspective uh, we have um, yeah, in, in an object or in the way that you invent objects that are, uh, provide the spacefarer with a kind of orientation. So this is the perspective. I hope you get it, what I, I'm meaning. And uh, the category, which is the Earth of, connected to the Earth out of view phenomenon, 
from this distance, Earth is out of view. And this is a very um, well-known photograph taken by the Voyager probe in 1990 when the probe passed by the Mars. And uh, they turned the cameras back, and the moment the photo was taken, you see a very small dot here, which is the pale blue dot. This is Earth. In fact, it happens, the visibility happens due to a, a reflection of the sun. Normally, you don't see Earth from this distance. And uh, scientists, uh, psychologists, uh, don't know what will happen when people are on the Mars and they are so disconnected from Earth that they can't see it. And uh, they expect that people decide to stay on Mars and they will die because going back for another 250 days will be a very hard job. And um, in this situation, they could decide it's better for us to stay on Mars and die there. So the artwork, and this is different to any other kind of object you can give to, an, um, uh, to a human being, the artwork itself always provides um, a bigger history than a pencil. So you can um, see things in an artwork which change over the time. So this is a kind of surplus you can uh, give uh, to the individual that you, um, uh, with the artwork, you give him or her something which changed over the time. So in, with the artwork of uh, placelessness, you can uh, bring them some earthbound life cycles or you can uh, provide the individual with some place concepts which are um, connected to some meaning. And with the meaning, it is, becomes to a kind of a relief and a positive support. So this is connected to the artwork of placelessness. Then we have sensorialness. Sensorial understimulation is a very big topic because uh, this is an, a photo taken from the International Space Station. You see here a totally uh, technical environment. And living in such an environment for more than three years uh, can be uh, quite boring. So a kind of stimulation is helpful here, and artworks are really close connected to sensorial stimulation. So they can stimulate uh, the user from uh, the visual side, the hearing by using music or the smell, uh, the touch. So whatever is connected to a haptical piece of work, but also video or sound, so some digital artworks are helpful here. Then we have the home likeliness, social boredom is a very big issue because uh, being trapped in such a can for three years with four or six people uh, can become very, very stressful. And inventing some participatory artworks which support the being together could become a good, um, art, a good solution for such a very small situation. And here, uh, any artwork which is invented should address the group and the being together and providing people with some meaning. Because going back uh, to Earth, coming from Mars, going back, this is a very hard aspect because the peak of the journey is already done. So they have been on Mars and going back is uh, quite challenging to provide people with meaning that they um, endure this uh, long travel back. And then we have the uh, fifth aspect, which is closelessness and the lack of privacy. There's only limited space inside. I already mentioned this. And uh, by the help of some uh, yeah, also participatory artworks, or artworks which are based on the hobby or the interest of the user could provide the individual with privacy in the way that you get concentrated on your work. And by doing it, you get a kind of flow experience and you forget everything uh, what is around you. So here, artworks are helpful which are based on the self, on the contact to the self, and the communication with the self. 
And uh, parallel to my uh, research, I uh, developed uh, the Nomadic Nature Kit. This was my practical component of my doctoral thesis. And uh, this artwork um, is, uh, can be connected to all the five topics I have mentioned before. And uh, what you see uh, at first is that it has a, a spherical transparent uh, shape and so it can be used while floating, but it also can be used from any perspective. There is no up and down in weightless space, no, right, no left, no right, so this is perfect for this. But um, you also can use it for the placelessness uh, concept because you, here you see some uh, garden or a small garden concept. It provides you with meaning which is connected uh, to Earth, um, but it also provides you with some earthbound life cycles. So by observing something which is growing, you have become very close to home, and this is seen as something which could be very helpful in, uh, in such a distance. From the sensorialness aspect, uh, it's quite clear. You can see it, touch it, smell it, eat it feel it, whatever, so this is a sensorial object. Uh, from the um, uh, group perspective, you can eat these plants, you can make a common dinner, and uh, by sharing dinner together, you are sharing information, so you also have a positive group aspect. And the fifth uh, issue, the uh, closelessness, is the gardening experience, so everybody who has a garden knows how happy you can become and be if you are in your garden and uh, following your hobby, but also uh, doing something which is close to you and brings you in contact with yourself, with your own history, and also connects you back to Earth. Uh, when I was uh, yeah, doing my research, I also came in contact with another category, which is a bit beside the five uh, topics I mentioned before. This is the aspect of interdisciplinarity. So dealing in an environment uh, which is so highly military and scientific, uh, coming there as an artist is quite challenging for the artist. So um, I, um, I already mentioned my very first like, a bit stupid question, but um, um, it is very uh, good if you are well prepared and you are inside uh, the main questions they are researching um, there. So uh, being familiar with all this uh, took a long time, but uh, at the moment you are um, yeah, familiarized, uh, you become a, a partner on the same level. And you have to be prepared that you have to give some um, professional talks, scientific talks. Uh, you need to know the vocabularies they are talking about, etc. And um, you also have to be prepared that there is a big ignorance about contemporary art forms and their potentials. So here you have to um, moderate between the discipline. You always have to explain what art is about and what, um, what you can do and what is necessary to be an artist, to work process oriented. These are all things which cannot happen in that way in, um, sci in, space, uh, envi in space research environments. Um, and uh, the final question in this interdisciplinary uh, paragraph is, that as an artist, you have to be very critical with yourself, how long you want to work in this environment, because here uh, the financing is a big issue, but also safety uh, questions are always posed to you as an artist. How does the work look like? How, uh, what is the weight about? Uh, what kind of um, material are you using? And uh, based on all these questions, um, my artwork, the Dramatic Nature Kit, is not an artwork in the way I can present it in, in art context in a gallery. In space context, this is called a breadboard model. 
This is the very basic object you can start from. Based on this, um, there are now questions on functionality, on security, on reliability. Is it a closed loop in the way that it can um, self-sustain self um, itself? So what happened when it fails, when the plants are gone, etc. Luckily, they are researching on plants a lot now. And I think if I would restart my research today, um, I would deal with it in a different way now with the knowledge which is accumulated since then. So as an outcome of my research, um, I um, uh, wrote a book of principles. So this book of principles lists all the five category plus the interdisciplinary category. You can find it on my website. And here you also find um, uh, the hypothesis you need in order to make an experiment of whatever you invent for the future space traveler. So it always starts with um, a sentence like this, the artwork is used as a coping strategy by long-term astronaut. And this is what could and should be tested. And uh, the next, uh, with the sensorialness, um, you can say the artwork will provide the user with sensory stimulation. So this is what has to be tested within space research. And um, I have uh, the principles, I have some design parameters, and I have some examples. And I would be happy if somebody starts with these uh, ideas and goes on with some new artworks and enter into um, yeah, this area. And uh, for myself, I can say uh, this artistic research has the potential to create an exciting exchange and enriching interaction, uh, which extend beyond the everyday artistic practice and initiate new thought uh, processes and experiences. And from my point of view, this is a very exciting endeavor. Thank you. Why, why you don't like science fiction? Yeah, it, um, be, I never um, read them. So, uh, of course, I'm going to the movies and I like uh, some films, but I cannot say that uh, I live in this world. And I know other people, other artists, which are very much interested in this. I'm not. So that's... So, but no, for no particular reason? No, it's my interests are uh, in a d other direction. But I have seen wonderful films about this. The last was The Woman on the Moon. Lovely uh, um, mute film. How you say it? Stumm film. Yeah. yeah. Silent movie. Silent movie, yeah. Very, yeah. But in this movie, you can see they start from a, a different, in a different time. It was so, from our perspective, naive how people are walking over the moon, but it was, on the other hand, such a poetic uh, description how you can live there. What was the second question? Um, I just wondered if you looked into uh, anything around seafaring. Um, if you looked into anything about sailing ships and seafaring, yeah. because uh, yeah. Yeah. especially hundreds of years ago, people spent months and months on boats, and um, whether that had you know, the artwork that they yeah, this was very interesting. I was um, fascinated by those who are going to the polar re uh, regions and who were trapped into the ice. And there were a lot of helpful um, literature and uh, letters I read about this. And uh, actually, 
Uh, it is one of my um, suggestions uh, to have a look into this because they did a lot of theater, they had uh, costumes with them, all these things. And in space research, actually they, they are dealing um, with um, the South Pole as an analog region, but looking into these uh, old techniques isn't the topic. Yeah. Starting with this very uh, natural scientific question, so your presentation was very black and white. You were talking about, you know, what happens to the body uh, when he or she is going to space, and you were talking about individuals. At the same time, I also think you left out, you know, the uh, whole big area of um, also science or research that is more about, you know, maybe social science fiction what happens to spaces, also like a symbol or a metaphor for what happens to humankind, what, where are we going, etc. Yeah. Et so this whole emotional, um, philosophical side was kind of really blanked out. Uh, it would be interesting. interesting. Uh, it was blacked out uh, because I had to make decisions. <laughs> so this is a huge topic and all these aspects you are mentioned, you could write several dissertations about this. But uh, I was focusing on uh, the real facts and on the research on, uh, which is uh, done today on human spaceflight. And already this is enormous and overwhelming and the way I uh, wanted um, it to stay as, uh, or to look at it from the artistic perspective, I made the decision of these categories and I mentioned this that uh, on the other hand, it, I would have stopped my research because it was so overwhelming from this black and white and how can I as an artist adapt to uh, all these big uh, issues. And going there, and uh, even my question, what did, do you feel? And this is a philosophical question. They thought I'm an idiot asking this question. And um, actually, they are not interested in these things. It's really hard doing all this um, uh, survi uh, survival question. It's, a diff it's really a difference if you are trapped in, um, in such a can. Maybe. If you are on the Mars, you come up with some philosophical question, maybe then. But uh, before, I think it's not of interest in this specific uh, as uh, content as yeah, aspects. Yeah. Maybe if I write a, di a second dissertation, maybe this is more <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So um, what, what's not really clear to me is how did he end up at this, at, um, in, in a, working as an artist in residence and doing a doctorate um, on the thesis on outer space? Like, how I ended up? How, I, how did you end up there? Like how, how did you end up with this topic and how did you end up working in this field exactly? Uh, to be honest, I was very relieved to be back on Earth again and to deal with other questions not with this survival question and not with this limited space. And I was really annoyed by the question about weightlessness. Although this is for artists very fascinating because this is a totally different kind of space you can deal with. But for the astronauts, uh, they get used to it after three days. It can happen that uh, they uh, uh, regain a kind of disorientation again, but for them, uh, the weightless environment is the everyday environment, the way that we have our everyday environment, which is ground bound. So for them, this is yeah, everyday experience. And I, um, I think the more interesting things, and which brings me also back uh, to some other question, this is this um, placelessness uh, concepts, dealing with place concepts, and what does it mean being uh, far away from Earth. Here, of course, you can adapt your artistic concepts to this scientific question. 
And um, with the placelessness uh, topic, I was uh, quite happy because uh, this is what I normally work with on Earth too. So here I am focusing on concepts of the atmosphere, which was connected to the question, how does it feel like there? And uh, yes, I was happy being back. And uh, I was um, inside two um, art science research um, studies. One was um, started by the Arts Catalyst in London, and the other was started by an Austrian um, space architect, Barbara Imhoff. And uh, she was also in Antarctica now and uh, dealing, you know her, uh, dealing with plants and because plants tomatoes and other plants are very important for the survival out there. And uh, both, um, both studies brought me in contact with other artists. And it was interesting because there, there were not many artists who were interested in the astronaut as a user and uh, recipient of uh, works of art. So, okay, my study finished now a couple of years, maybe now there are more who are dealing with this issue. So I was just curious about the, um, the artifacts that you made, the final last um, stone artifacts that, because um, uh, you talked about uh, why you put it to like, the shape, it's like uh, with some of the idea of like uh, weightless and everything. And also, I'm just wondering, also you talked about the plants in it, and the artifacts for me, uh, look, um, the design of it, or the appearance of it, it's like a little, uh, there's many choices. I don't know what prototype you brought, borrowed from, or how did you modify these artifacts from other, um, artifacts that are related with these concepts or? No, no, this was my work. This was the very first idea I had when I started with my research. Mm -hmm. And it turned out during the time that my intuitive idea uh, fits very well to what I came, out in, came up with in the end. So this was the very starting point. And uh, yeah. Does this answer your question? I think almost it's just, um, I was curious about the choice of the plants. And yeah, but um, this is open. Mm -hmm. So in a weightless space, plants are growing into any direction. And um, I took uh, these kinds of uh, plants because they were growing very fast and uh, then I could deal with it. But uh, when I gave an earthbound presentation, it was different because uh, on earth plants are growing to the ground. So we have an up and a down, and then I have a, a, a different presentation, uh, which gives you an idea how, it will, how people will deal with this in outer space. But it's a breadboard model I mentioned. So in space research, they will start now and they will ask very serious question and uh, how it can be used as a closed loop that it is um, supporting itself, how the humidity changed the plants, how, which kind of soil do you uh, use? And um, I use later some agar agar, which they also use. So this is, you know, um, you know this from cooking, and uh, so uh, uh, this soil doesn't uh, float into <laughs> the, around. So all these things you have to be aware about, yeah, and you learn. You are constantly learning what's possible and what's not. Um, so how did your dialogue with the astronauts, with the scientific community of the astronauts change over, like how long was the residency? Oh, I was there several times, so altogether I was there for four weeks, I can say. So I went there, um, it's hard to get into. It's, just, it's probably a really close community. I yeah. Assume. So 
Yes, and it's interesting because you need a person who invites you. And uh, these people, they are not, that's not a lifetime job. They, uh, so when I started, uh, on one hand, the politics is changing. So uh, the way where the money is spent from the ESA, but also from NASA. So when uh, we had um, Bush as a president, he wanted to go to Mars. We had Obama, he spent his money in the low Earth orbit. We have now uh, Trump, he wants to go to the moon. And uh, all these uh, changes um, influence the research, so where the money goes and where the concentration is. And it happens, and this happens to me, I wanted to go on a parabolic flight and I applied everything and I was accepted. And then the responsible person who was working with me changed his job. And so there, the contact was gone, and I was a bit lost. And then I, I didn't do this for, also for some other reasons. But it is surprising, and this is what I meant before. As an artist, you have to question yourself very seriously. How long do you want to stay there? How, how much time of your life you want to spend in this research? I have one more question. I think nobody else. You want to? We have one. Yeah, please. Thanks. Um, so you've been talking about doing artwork for astronauts, specifically long-term travel. So it might be a naive question, but a bit related to, to what Pete asked before. And like, if I imagine to be an astronaut and had long-term travel, I mean, I can with little effort, like I can consume a lot of art, but mainly things like music. Like music, I would just need a very small device, easy, portable, but then that small device could allow me to consume loads of artwork. Same with any other digital media. So that's one angle. And then the other is what, what was also mentioned before, like artistic practice you can do as an astronaut, like you can play theater or you can sing or dance or, or create visual art on whatever digital surface. So there's a lot of things that kind of could provide a lot of sensory stimulus to that astronaut. So why do you think a particular physical object that is very like, it's a lot of thing, to, like a lot of weight, a lot of like, stuff to bring, but it's very static. It's, very, it's only one particular object. So what do you think, why is it important to also have like an artifact in contrast to digital art you could bring to uh, This is not a naive question. Second, this is an example how it can look like. Third, you, of course, uh, you can invent uh, or you can give the astronaut some music some uh, painting or some whatever you you give to him or her but somebody has to think about it before and how does the perception change over this long um, time frame and uh, here i think uh, there are a lot of uh, um, things which could be invented from an artistic perspective and somebody has to do it and uh, of course, the astronaut told me, what shall I do with art? I take a photograph of my family and I'm happy. OK. Maybe they are happy for about three years. But when they are trapped in the can, and after uh, yeah, the half of the journey, they get bored from everything, then it could be helpful to put out a, um, a painting or a new kind of music, and they are happy. So, but uh, and um, scheduling the times, uh, the travel time, could this was in um, in the Arctic um, in the 18th uh, century, also a principle that they took some presents from the family and uh, they made a time a schedule when they open these presents and. Uh, this is very simple, or when they um, celebrate some uh, specific holidays or some specific goals they had reached. So then they can open a kind of box and uh, 
take something which entertains you and supports uh, the scenario in a positive way. And somebody has to think about it. Otherwise, they take a photograph of their family. Yeah. So, <coughs> so if there are no more questions, I would like to thank you very much for coming. And thank you for this nice talk in Dava. Thank, thank you. you.